What's up everybody? Saturday morning here at the house. There's some stuff going on down at the shop today that kind of prevents me from working on the RX-7 for a little bit. So I'm gonna do some stuff in my home garage here. My E46 is here and it needs a little bit of work before the event next weekend. So I'm gonna try to get that taken care of. Um, battery's dead on it, needs different spring adjusters put in the rear, that just little stuff. So I'm gonna try to knock that out this morning and then head down to the shop this afternoon. It is pretty cold out here. It is, um, according to this, it is like 25 in here. Um, but luckily I've got a heater in here, so it's a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I will show you how to get those adjusters out for the rear. If you guys remember, I broke them both. Broke both rear control arms at that last IMI day. So, got to get that fixed. Um, like I said the battery's dead. I'm going to throw it on the charger for a couple hours. Hopefully she runs. Um, never had the battery die on it before, but it's been, like I said, it gets down to 20 in here. So, probably didn't like the cold. So, yeah. All right, so I got these out. Um, let me show you kind of what the problem was. These are some HKS springs that I had laying around that I just threw in here because the fortune ship was broken and I was waiting on it for them. So the problem I ran into originally, see, um, is the springs sit right around that guy there. And um, apparently, Something in the design of the fortunes, because I never ran into it with the BCs, made both the adjusters pop through right around here and just push this whole bottom of the control arm out. Um, I guess it's somewhat of a common problem. I've just never ran into it before. Um, so what we did is we got these from, I think, Bimmer World, and they just drop in and kind of locate in this hole here. Sorry, I don't have my gimbal today, so it's like I'm drunk. Um, those just kind of lock in there, sit, and it's supposed to reinforce that so it doesn't happen again. I'll show you guys once I get the fortune stuff back here from down at the shop, the difference in the design of these spring cups. These are set up the same as the BC ones, where these are just kind of widened and sit, sit on the control arm flat like that. Um, I'll show you the fortune ones once I get them, but they're... They've got like a stud that comes through and goes all the way through the control arm and nuts from the underside. And I have a theory that that sitting on the control arm locked in, I feel like it needs to have some ability to do this and that prevents it. And that maybe wore out the control arm because it's just extremely suspect to me that I went a season and a half with this style of adjuster and about four hours with the other style and broke both lower control arms in the process. So I'm gonna get packed up a little bit here, head down to the shop, pick up those other parts, see if my dad needs some help with the Miata he's working on down there, and then we'll be back to finish this off later tonight. All right, just got down to the shop. So I'm gonna walk through and show you guys what my dad's been working on here and what we're doing down here today. We got this little guy in, customer car. Um, pretty simple, just pulling the diff and welding it. Dad came in this morning and got the diff out. It's sitting here, clean with acetone, ready to weld. We're working on making some plates to plate it. So he's doing over there right now. And then uh, we're gonna weld it up.
All right, so while this is cooling off, I'll kind of show you what I did here. It's hard to see. My dad made those plates. You can not really tell it's there anymore, but it's down covering up where that pin used to be. I like my plates to sit down kind of below the gears on that pin. Um, and then I go in the corners. You can see I did it first by how, um, how rusted, not rusted, how oxidized it is already. In the corners, do all four corners um, to each other. Some people just stop there and that might be okay in low power cars, but um, I don't ever want to worry about my diffs breaking. So I kind of overkill a little bit because I bring both all four of those corners down onto that center plate. And then I go around and do every gear tooth and tie every tooth down into that steel plate. So this is the one side, Let's rotate it here. You can see the other side is the same. Now this is the first side. You can see again, every tooth is tied into that base plate and the corners are tied into each other. Um, this is the same way I've always done them. I've got two of them like this in LS cars behind 400 plus horsepower for multiple seasons, no problems. Um, it's just something I never wanna have to worry about. That's the whole point of welding a diff is to take all the question out of it. So yeah, this is going in that Miata. So not a big power car. So he should be good forever. Um, hard pressed to break that even if he does one day go LS or something in that Miata. This diff will take it, easy peasy. All right, so back at home now, got these parts. I'm gonna kind of show you the difference and kind of what I'm thinking. So like I kind of showed you before, these, these are the HKS ones. They're the same style as the, uh, the BC ones, more or less. There's slight differences, but they're pretty close. Um, they've got this big flat thing, you know? Sits, good to go. Um, these, are the new Fortunato ones. Actually, that's an old one. These are the new Fortunato ones. So see, they have this weird plate and nut that go through the control arm and tighten. And, you know, obviously this, well, it's not nearly as, I don't understand why they did it like that. Um, none of the other ones I've seen are like that. It's just kind of dumb to me. So here is one of the damaged ones um, that was on the car before. You can see all the threads on here have the paint off them. They all stripped out when it punched through the control arm. So it damaged this. Both of these studs bent. Um, and this is the other one. It didn't go through nearly as far, but you can see where it punched through to there and once again damaged this. So I had to replace both of these with about, I don't know, 20 laps of a mile a piece, 20 miles on these. Um, both control arms failed. So here's the other new one. And then I got Swift Springs with these, not these big beehive, like the HKS style ones. So I'm gonna be putting these back in on the new fortunes um and hopefully those reinforcement plates solve the problem i haven't fully decided i'm kind of contemplating just like not putting these nuts on so that when, once it's you know through the control arm it can rock a little without fatiguing the aluminum or putting these on loosely with loctite so they're just kind of you know locating it in the control arm better but not not torqued down to the point that it's gonna wiggle in the control arm and weaken the aluminum again um so i haven't really decided yet i'm gonna see what i can do once i get them in and see if i have any other nuts these size to maybe double nut them so they don't back off something like that All right, so I got these in. Um, had to hit up my buddy Yoshi from Bimmer Forums to figure out where all this shit's supposed to go because I couldn't remember. But I want to show you something else I noticed when I was down here. So it's really hard to see. 
Um, where am I? Okay. Right there is that nut and stuff I was talking about. Um, I just put them slightly over finger tight, um, but I used some red Loctite on it so the nut won't back itself off. But you can see it hit the axle here at some point, which is a little sketchy. Um, I don't really know how it, I'm assuming it did it when the control arm pushed through, but this was the side that didn't do it nearly as bad. Um, so that's a little concerning. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, if I have an issue with these again, I think I'm just gonna get a hold of some BC ones and switch to those and be done with these. But for now, we got those in, rolling all over the place. Um, I did them, so that's how that sits with the reinforcement plates, and then the swift spring and the rubber goes up on top. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to set the preload, get the shocks reattached, and we should be ready to go. All right, so that's mostly done. Um, I forgot my coilover adjuster spanners at the shop, so I can't adjust it much. I think I might have too much droop dialed in. Um, I did set it how they say with, you know, five mil of preload, but five mil of preload on the inside of the spring is leaving this almost finger-sized gap on the outside of the spring there. So I think I'm gonna jack it up until the whole, until the whole spring contacts, um, and then reset the shock droop there and see if that changes anything. Um, they're not really clear on which way they want that to be. It just says five millimeters. Um, so what I'm doing now, this battery died like I mentioned earlier. So got it on the charger here, um, rigged up to the kill switch and the chassis ground because the battery's in a sealed box inside and don't want to deal with taking that out. So I'm gonna let this hang out for a little bit and come back in about an hour or so and start her up, run her through a heat cycle Make sure everything's good to go and call it a day.